Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're joined by the very successful design blogger Emily A. Clark to talk about interior design, home decor, and the 2020 trends. Emily helps her readers break down big decorating ideas so they're less intimidating and more doable. We love the ideas Emily shared with us, and we know you will too. Let's get started. Hi, Mindy. Hey, Marie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Marie. Today, we're going to be talking about interior design, and I know that the three of us, we love that topic. Yes, so fun. We're going to be talking about interior design, home decor, and everyone wants to know what the 2020 trends are. And listeners, we are so excited about our guest today. We're joined by Emily Clark. Emily's been featured in several national publications, including Better Homes and Gardens, USA Today, and Better Homes and Gardens Refresh Magazine. She also blogs at emilyaclark.com. Emily, welcome to Midlife Matters. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I am so excited to have you here today. I have followed you for years, and I find your style to be both inspiring and attainable. And I was just so thrilled when you said you would come on the podcast. (laughs) Thank you. I couldn't figure out why you would ask me to be on a Midlife Matters podcast, but (laughs) I quickly figured that out. (laughs) We're all grappling with our midlife um, (laughs) status. (laughs) All right. Well, Emily, will you give our listeners a little background on you, your family, and your work? Sure. Like you said, I blog at emilyaclark.com, and I've been at that for 10 years now. I just hit my 10-year anniversary, which is crazy how fast it's gone by. But I am married, and we live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I grew up in Kentucky. I've lived here since 99, and we got married in 2000. We have five kids. Our oldest is a boy, 15. He just got his permit. Oh, wow. um, and then we have a 13-year-old daughter, a 10-year-old daughter, and then seven-year-old boy-girl twins. Oh, wow. Yes. And listeners, one of the things that attracted me to Emily was the fact that she has twins, number four and five, and so do I. And I think when I came across that on her blog, I never forgot it and just added her to my list of people to follow. And now I've been following her for years. It's really <laughs> cool to see the pictures of your family grow over the years and the way they've changed. It is. It's crazy how people will say they still remember, like I posted the day that we found out we were having the twins. They still remember the pictures we took of our faces <laughs> because we were in such shock. And then just the people that watch my kids grow up, it's it's a neat thing to, to see. It is. It is. All right. Well, how long have you been a designer, Emily? Were you designing before you had your blog? No. So the backstory on that is I'm actually, I have a public relations degree. I'm not a, a professionally trained designer I didn't even know that I really even liked to decorate until after I got married and we bought a house and then I just started kind of dabbling in it. So I'm pretty much self-taught. I just enjoy doing it. I did work at Ethan Allen for a while, working as part of their in-store design service team. And then uh, after I had our third child, I needed that outlet. (laughs) So I'm sure Mm -hmm, you all can identify with. So I just started the blog kind of as a way to boost a decorating business that I wanted to get going and both of them took off, but the design business was a little more than I could handle or would have expected. So I was doing some work for local clients. I was taking some online design jobs, and then I was trying to write this blog and get it going. So I was posting pretty much every day. I did that for several years, and then I found out that the twins were on the way. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I kind of took that as God's definitive answer that I had to do one thing or the other. <laughs> right. So at that point in time, I gave up my design business and I just concentrated uh, fully on the blog, and that's what I've been doing ever since then. And mothering, of course. (laughs) Right. Right. All right. Well, today we want to talk about redecorating your home in midlife. You know, all of our kids are starting to get older, and hopefully they aren't quite as hard on our furniture, or they're starting to graduate, and we can claim some of their spaces for ourselves again. And many listeners, they want to start making changes, but aren't sure where to start. So before we get into details, what do you think, Emily, are some of the must-haves or the pillars of design that we really need, like despite our style, things that will have longevity? You know, I've thought about this before, and I think it really will differ from person to person and what, you know, depending on what your personal taste is. For me, I think the things that have kind of gone from house to house and that I still like as much 10 years ago as I did now would be like maybe, you know, a big statement mirror that can work in so many different spaces. And that's probably worth investing a little money into. I've always had some kind of like natural area 
natural fiber area rug, either jute or sisal. I think that's a classic, also a good investment, especially with kids because they show so little. Right. You know, I also like bookcases filled with books. I think that just makes any room feel better and just adds a little warmth. Another thing I think about is if you find maybe an antique chest or a storage piece, you can also think of ways to use them in different rooms. So I really like to invest in those pieces that I know I could use in different ways. It's not just set from one spot in my house forevermore. Sure. And I think it's been interesting. If you look through the years on your blog, you have had some of your pieces, but you use them in different Mm -hmm. rooms and in different ways. And that's so inspiring. And I love that. That is my favorite game to play is to try to move furniture from room to room. And you know, my husband kind of rolls his eyes, but and I just yell, it's my job. Um, <laughs> right. But if he's, you know, if he's not home, then I'll just put a beach towel under it and drag the furniture, <laughs> furniture ah, around. I, I knew I liked you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I had messed up some wood floors, moving some well, things I around. <laughs> yeah. So now yes, it's blankets, same. towels, like anything that I can get under there. <laughs> yep. Someday I'll have my floors refinished. <laughs> right. I have a high boy that we had when we got married and it was kind of that Queen Anne style glossy Mm -hmm. wood. And I just don't, you know, I don't like that style anymore. So I painted it kind of a charcoal color and Mm -hmm. distressed it and sanded off the corners. And I love it now. I'd even distressed the brass handles, you know, made them dark. Yeah. But is it appropriate to put that outside of the bedroom, like in your den or? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Because I want to do that. But I thought, oh, it's bedroom piece. If you even had space like in a bathroom, that would be great for storage or you could roll up towels in there. You could, I mean, you could put it anywhere, really. You could use it in a living room corner. I said, dining room look funny, so. No, and actually, I mean, I've seen people use them out in living spaces before. And okay. I don't think, I don't think there's any like hard and fast rule on where you have to use a piece. It says me who gets the beach town drags furniture around. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> My style is mostly Colonial Williamsburg. Like we have white walls, painted colored trim, Windsor chairs that, you know, Mm -hmm. a lot of wood, but I haven't done a lot to update my style in the last 25 years. And I don't want to start over. I don't want to throw all this Mm -hmm. out to the curb, start over. Like, what could I do to kind of freshen it up without changing my style? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you probably have some really great classic pieces. It sounds like, and I'm I'm personally a fan of the Colonial Williamsburg look. Mm-hmm. I went there several years ago and went toured the houses and it was just mind boggling how some of the rooms look like things you could see in like El Decor or House Beautiful today. It's all coming back mm-hmm. around. But I would say if you're just wanting to make some quick, fresh changes, I think one of the first things, no matter what your style is, I always go to lamps first. I think that's always a great place to start with a refresh because usually when you go into somebody's house that hasn't done a lot of updates, they either either have like the wrong scale of lamps or they look outdated. So I think adding like a bigger scale um, lamp or set of lamps in a room can always help. Personally, I mean, I think a great piece of art, an abstract or very minimalist overscale, you know, piece of art, which I'm a big fan of doing it yourself. If mm-hmm. if you have, you mm-hmm. know, the resources and want to try that, I think all of that can blend into a very traditional space and just give it a really fresh look. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I mean, Colonial Williamsburg is so inspired by Asian influences. So I think any of the chinoiserie stuff that's so popular right now, like the blue and white pieces, or like some of the really pretty chinoiserie floral inspired fabrics. Mm-hmm. You could add pillows or curtains, you know, things like that to kind of freshen your space. We're going to see Julie doing this in the next couple I of weeks. Wait. I can just see it now. <laughs> I know. Like, <laughs> that's right. When you said if you have the resources, I was thinking, yes, Julie is talented enough to do that. She <laughs> is. Really I always keep this running file on Pinterest of art that I like and Oh. It usually means art that's easy enough that I could probably in some way recreate it or, you know, make something that looks similar. <laughs> that's a great yeah. idea. I haven't thought of using Pinterest that way. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing is, um, you know, I'm always looking for just good frames. If I'm in a the thrift store or consignment store, oh, I try to look yeah. for the frames and then you can always, just, you know, people think that sometimes I made the abstract art that was um, behind our sofa before the last change. <laughs> They always asking me like, how, how did you do that? Or, you know, what kind of paper did you use? Right. The embarrassing answer is, is that I grabbed some copy paper out of our printer and I just sit down on my garage floor and no way. <laughs> use some of the paint that my kids had <laughs> out already. And oh. I did those things in like three minutes, but I put them in a, like a pretty frame with a big mat around it and it right. always looks better. Well, and I love that. I loved your plastic frames that you spray painted gold too. I mean, I would have never known. 
those are the, the best investment. I mean, they were just yeah. a couple of dollars from Michael's. They were black. Just sprayed them gold. And then I ordered the mats. I had them custom yeah. made. So you have a lot of mat and a little bit of art. Etsy sellers will do that. There's eBay sellers that will cut the mats for you. Yeah. So you never have to leave the house. Basically. Yeah, they look great. And I like how you don't you change the art out periodically too. Sometimes, yeah. Just when I yeah. get a whim and... Right. Oh, well, you don't have yeah. to feel bad about doing that if you, all it took was coffee, paper, and uh, some paints. It's just embarrassing when people ask. I know they want this really great answer, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I love when I have an answer like that because it really does, like, it makes people kind of, like, take a step back and think. And I'm sure they're thinking I just spent, like, a couple thousand dollars on <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> I want it to look good. I mean, I want it to Mm -hmm. look really good. And that's what I love about your style is it looks really good. So it's not like it looks like it's copy paper and gold paint, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, is there anything important to take into consideration as we start thinking about our next phase in our houses? Like if our kids are leaving, as our kids are growing up, what are some things we should think about maybe now at midlife when we're decorating for later? One thing to consider is really how you're using the spaces in your home, especially as you have kids that may be getting ready to, you know, go off to college or you have spaces open up that you may have not had before. You know, when they are all gone, you may not need three guest rooms or Mm. a formal dining rooms. You know, for me, it's all about in our house, we really do use every space. I just think that the more function you can get out of your house, it's like getting more bang for your buck. So if you don't need second guest bedroom or a guest bedroom, then you know maybe that you can make that a craft room or a reading room or something that you've always really wanted where you're actually enjoying the space. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good idea because I have three guest bedrooms. See? <laughs> which <laughs> I have used that on one occasion, you know, when right. I had. Okay, yes. But I feel so bad that I've spent a lot of money in investing and decorating them and then they just kind of sit there. So... Yeah, a, a craft room would be nice. Or It is funny how that we sometimes decorate our houses based on things that happen one time a year or right. two times a year. You know, it's it's crazy, really, that we spend this money on, you know, furniture and we have these mortgages we pay every month. And then it's we, true. We right. don't really use the space to where we can enjoy it. I know my yeah. husband keeps trying to convince me that our dining room ne- really needs to be the pool table room. Like he doesn't want the pool table in the basement. He really would like we it. We do have friends level. that have a pool table like, in their dining room. That <laughs> might be, that might turn into us. I, I'm thinking <laughs> <laughs> if we've been out of redecorating for the last 10 or 15 years, I'm sure there's some new technology that's out there, like new fabrics, new materials, new products that are kind of, you know, bringing us up to the 21st century. Can you talk about any of those? There seems to be smart everything. Um, For example, just a couple of weeks ago, I did a partnership through Instagram with GE and they now have smart light bulbs, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, it doesn't sound like something that's necessarily on the top of your list to do. But once I put them in, it was surprising how wonderful they were. They come on every night at 530. Nobody ever wants to crawl over the back of our couch to turn the lights on behind the couch. So I can set them to come on whenever. It's all done with an app on my phone. So that's pretty cool. That is really neat. I am truly interested in this, Emily. (laughs) We've just moved into a house. The house is only six years old, but the couple that built it didn't pay to have overhead lights put in a lot of the rooms. I have like a hundred lamps everywhere. And seriously, every night I'm going around flipping lamps. Okay. And then, and I love lamps anyway for, you know, certain places, but no lamps to survive. And I would love to hear more. This light bulb sounds amazing. (laughs) It's pretty cool. Okay, Emily, you think that I would be past baby proofing my house, but I feel like I have to boy proof my house on any night of the week. There's a football, a basketball, a soccer ball. There's wrestling. There's food being carried (laughs) as they have the sideways look as they're trying to walk past me. And I'm like, I see you. (laughs) So my question for you is color palettes or fabrics or things that you would suggest for just a very active home that can somewhat boy proof. Like I can't tell you how many lamps have been broken, pictures knocked down off the walls, my moldings getting cracked already in certain places from just boys. I do. I know about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, (laughs) This is actually very timely because last week we just had a very competitive basketball game in our playroom and we no longer have a light fixture. It was just hanging. So my husband and it's like, (laughs) okay. Thank you. I don't feel so bad. (laughs) The beautiful part of that is I paid like $75 for that light on Amazon. And so he's going to work on it. But if not, it's not a total wash, which is my other advice for 
boy proofing is to not buy anything too precious right. because there's really no such thing. My mom always quotes my granddad as saying, when you have kids, you have nothing else. And I didn't understand <laughs> what that meant until <laughs> now. Like, it's, I totally get it. I mean, I've bought a lot of our furniture off Craigslist or right. um, Facebook Marketplace or Ikea for that very purpose, because I know none of this is probably going to like last past the five-year mark at the rate we're going with the wrestling right. and the body throwing and all that stuff. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's how life works and you don't want your kids to not enjoy their home too. <laughs> you know, for me, we've used a velvet, uh, like a dark navy velvet sectional in our playroom and that's actually held up really well for us. I'm sure it's probably filthy, but you can't see anything. Right. <laughs> so to me, it's all about the disguise. Um, we've used Amen, the Ikea sister. Ectorp. Yeah, we've used the IT, Ikea Ectorp sofas, um, which have been great as far as durability for the price. They are the slip-covered sofas. I started out white thinking, oh, I'm just going to throw this in the washer every other week. I did not. You don't do that. It's just, it's awful. <laughs> so I threw the white ones out and I went for the khaki and so much better. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, a worn leather. I mean, you can't really beat that because it's right. supposed to look worn. It gives, you know, your room a great texture and... It can't get worse. <laughs> right. You There's just also described a lot of, all of my furniture. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right on trend. You know, there's also a lot of great, I mean, performance fabrics. And there's a company that makes fabric, very kid-proof, kid-friendly fabrics called Revolution Fabrics. I haven't actually used them yet, but it's on my 2020 list at some point. Their hush feel is you basically cannot destroy this fabric. That's awesome. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. Now I need a lamp that won't break. Right. Good luck. <laughs> We have moved a lot. Every house we live in is different. I've tried to do well with picking furniture pieces that I can kind of mix and match, you know, color palettes that I can add in pops of color, change out the design with curtains or pillows, Mm -hmm. but keep, you know, kind of the main Mm -hmm. pieces. When I go to look at furniture, is, is there some thought process I can go into as thinking like this will work in multiple places? I mean, for me, when I'm shopping and I do buy a lot of my stuff secondhand, it's, I think it's best if you can take your time and really let the pieces find you. If you see something that you just love and you know you're going to love kind of forever more, then I think you're going to find a way to make that work. You know, there's some pieces I love and I would, I know I'm going to have those. I found this great faux bamboo china cabinet. I mean, I love it. Right now it's in our dining room, but it could easily go to another room for books or towels or, you know, extra kitchen storage. So I'm not necessarily thinking about where I'm going to put something in a spot, but more or less, is this really my style? Do I just, you know, have to have this? Mm -hmm. And I think you can make it work. I actually think it's a lot of fun. I mean, we've moved several times as well. And I always think that's a fun challenge to use the same pieces, but then you bring in a totally different rug and your whole color scheme is is different suddenly. So I think it's more of the accessories to change up and then just to keep your bigger storage pieces. Well, I really like what you said about kind of letting the pieces find you because that's really good like buying something that you really love because then you will use it like Julie loves her high boy she's not going to get rid of it and now she's yeah. going to use it in other places like right I think that those are the pieces that do have longevity if it's something that we bought at Target to fill a need in a certain house in a certain corner that's the kind of thing we toss the next time we move because it doesn't quite work I mean, that's exactly like the whole rooms to go concept. I mean, that's exactly what you don't want to do is to go. I have to have furniture for this room. So I'm going to buy it all today on Saturday. I'm going to come home and this room is going to be finished. You know, good design doesn't work that way. It takes a while and you need to buy a piece and then think a little bit. I spend a lot of time staring at Mm -hmm. my rooms and the walls. (laughs) Right. Plus, I think that's bad. But I do. I think about it. I think the hunt for a piece is fun. It's a lot of fun. I don't think I'd ever want to go and buy a whole room of furniture at once. Because once you're finished, it's kind of boring. You got to start over again. <laughs> you know? I've never, I've never been finished, so I don't know what that's like. But. I know there are people in my life who finish and then they really are happy to be done. But I think certain personalities, I think all four of us have the personality. We never really do want to be done. No, my husband would be totally fine to be finished in right. a two-hour oh. span. <laughs> yes. But I changed all that. <laughs> and because there's Instagram and Pinterest and we're always exactly. seeing something new and and thinking of a better way to do something or to use a piece. Yes. Yes. And actually that brings me to my next question. When looking for things to purchase, what are the things that you would suggest that we spend more money on like quality pieces? Mm -hmm. And then what are some things that you would suggest we just get from Target or from the home goods store? 
You know, I think that uh, Home Goods and Target, places like that, they have stepped up their accessory games so much. I think that mm-hmm. anything that's trendy, anything you ever suddenly seen on Instagram, in mm-hmm. you know, twenty times over, those are probably the things that you need to be going to a place like Home Goods or Target to buy. And if you know you're not going to love it two seasons from now, then it's not worth a huge investment. So right. I love Home Goods. Um, you know, I love Home Goods for lamps. Right. I mean, yes. you can get a great pair of lamps. They have great brands there. Me too. Um, if you're lucky, you can usually find a pair. And I right. always buy two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just yes. in case. But I think that as far as more investment pieces, I think right. a good rug is always worth the investment, especially okay. because there's a lot of wear and tear on a rug. And I think a quality rug is good. It doesn't necessarily mean it's got to cost thousands of dollars. You can still get a nice rug for hundreds of dollars. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I think, a, like I was saying before, I think a big statement mirror is, is worth the investment that you can mm-hmm. use in different spaces if you decide to change it up. And I think that a good storage piece is worth the investment, whether it be like a you know, pretty chest that could go in your entryway and then maybe be moved as a bedside table at some point. Right. Oh, and I think, I think another thing is probably a dining room table. You find a good dining room table that you love. A okay. chair, you know, you change up your chairs from something very traditional to something more modern. It can give you right. a totally different look. And I like the idea of the legacy of a dining table and having that right. and passing it on. Um, we started right. this thing a couple of years ago where we have people that come in our house to eat with us, get underneath our table and ride on the bottom of it to sign it. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little awkward unless we know them really well, but um, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> you know, it's fun that we can look under there and see some of the people that have come through our house. So. That is really cool. I that's love that. That's a great that. idea. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. I bet that's really fun to go back and look at. All right, Emily, I think one of the things that we're most excited to talk to you about now that we're in January, Christmas is behind us. Let's talk about some of the trends for 2020. And I had a lot of fun looking on the internet for some predictions. And for predictions for this year, I saw that I think many people in the middle years that we've seen these things fluctuate back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I read that they may be making a comeback. So I want to see what you think. All right. So they said anything but white kitchens. They said white kitchens are out. What do you say? Who is they, first of all? (laughs) Yeah. Talk about that. I only wrote down a source for a couple of these, so I'm not sure. But I have been hearing this for a while. And I do always hear it with um, a bit of skepticism because I think, okay, they always want you to get to doing just something new because then you have to upgrade. But have you seen a return of other things other than white kitchens? I do think that we're seeing more color in kitchens. I do Mm -hmm. think that's coming back. But if you have just installed a brand new white kitchen, I don't think you're in trouble <laughs> because yes. it's such a classic, it's such a classic clean look. And if I mean, that's what you, you like. yeah, and, and that's what you like. I mean, I think that's what you always have to keep in mind with these trends is that these are usually coming from someone in the design industry trying to do something else or to prove their right. expertise. So I think that's right. something to kind of keep in mind. Sometimes I get a little irritated by these trends or the predictions, um, not necessarily what's coming in, but things that have are officially out. I think that's crazy. Right. It's all ultimately about what you feel good about in your own space. Um, But as far as the kitchen, you know, when we did our kitchen renovation a few years ago, we did a big section of ours in white cabinetry, but then we did another section in the emerald green cabinets. And I love it. And I love it too. And I hope that I still love it (laughs) in Mm -hmm. 10 years. But I started thinking, you know, I've always been a green person. I've always loved the color. So why would I suddenly not like it? And then you know, I can always pair different wallpaper across the way with it or, you know, add some of my blue and white pieces that I love so much to give it a fresh look. So I think that, again, I'm always thinking in the back of my mind, is there a way that I could change this in a few years if I'm sick of it? Mm -hmm. I did want to ask um, some more clarifying questions about this because the home that I was just telling you I moved into, it's only six years old. It's a large kitchen and there are these beautiful cherry cabinets. Now, it's not like red, red. It's on the Mm -hmm. warmer side. I love them. I came from a kitchen of cheap white cabinets. And so to move into this house and see these beautiful cabinets, I think, okay, well, I do. I love a white kitchen. I mean, a quality cabinet white kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) I got it. (laughs) Okay. But I'm trying to think of some ways that I can brighten up my warm cherry cabinet. So what are, what can I do in there? Because I do feel like it can look dated, mm-hmm. but what can I do? I mean, there's always wall color. So you could go that direction uh-huh. if you wanted to change up your wall color. But 
you know, if you love the cherry, the cherry cabinets, it, it is very warm. So mm-hmm. I would think how is, um, you know, is there a possibility to bring in maybe fabrics into my kitchen and mm-hmm. bring in color that way? So think about like, is there an opportunity to do a window treatment or a kitchen runner could be a lot of fun to put okay. something, you know, totally different with pattern. It's maybe not quite so traditional to kind of balance everything out. There's always ways to bring in accessories and, and color without painting the cabinets. I right. think that's everybody's first thought, but it's a big undertaking. It is. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I just kind of want to add to it. So that's helpful. All right, Emily, I've seen this back and forth in my lifetime, but I read that dining rooms are making a comeback in 2020. Where did they go? <laughs> I think just that for so long, we've been urged to maybe not use our formal dining room, or if we don't use it all the time, make it something else. And I think people are yes. bringing them back. I think dining rooms are back, but I think that they're going to be a lot different than we've seen in the past. And I don't think they're going to be these ultra formal rooms anymore that are kind of just secluded off from the rest of the house and mm-hmm. never used except for maybe once or twice a year. I think they are going to be more casual, more comfortable, better seating, <laughs> maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Maybe not so over the top with like the lighting and the fabrics and, you know, the heavy furniture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, we have a designated dining room, but it's a very small space and we use it for a ton of things. Ours ends up being just an overflow from our kitchen eating area. So we have a big group over, then extra people will float into that room to eat. But we also have a piano in that room. We have um, like a big chest full of my kids' art Mm -hmm. projects and supplies. We have our printer. So there's always paper everywhere. Right. So it's my office, mm-hmm. it's homework room, it's everything. And for us, you know, our family that never like sits down for a formal dinner, even on holidays, um, it just works better just to have a casual space. Right. And a multi-purpose. That's why I've always been reluctant to get rid of my dining room. We never eat in there except as an overflow. But we have seven people in our family. And if you have anyone over, you're pretty much naturally going to have overflow. Mm-hmm. So where would I put them if I got rid of my dining room? Even if I do only right. use it, you know, not super regularly. It does become a catch-all room like yours. Mm-hmm. It does. And with our house, it's as soon as you walk in the door. So, uh-huh. right. you know, you can see it. I want it to look nice. But at the same time, I just have a lot of drawers and storage where, you know, if force comes to worse, I can just start shoving things yes. away. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, this is interesting. I read that for many years, the trend has been to create open spaces. And this year, designers will try to create more intimate, private spaces. Is the open concept you hear on every house hunters going away? (laughs) (laughs) That's going to be tricky if it does completely. But it's funny because I once heard a study, and I don't have a source to credit this to, but it said that even people that live in these huge houses will always congregate in the smallest room with the the shortest ceilings, which I thought was interesting. Mm. So I think we're always kind of looking for where do we feel the most warm and cozy in our own spaces. Um, You know, some people automatically, I think when they walk into a house and they see the two-story living room, it's all very grand and majestic. And it's such a wow factor when you first walk in. But I think the way you actually live in your space is a lot different once you get over that first huge impression. Mm. Right. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what builders will do in the future. I don't I really have a good grasp on sure. if they're going back to that. Yeah. Um, but for our house, it's one that was one draw for me actually was I love the eight feet ceilings because I can get jump up in a chair, I can oh, paint yeah. a room by myself. I think each room having walls makes it a more definitive space so that I can do different things design wise in each one and I don't have to carry one paint color throughout the whole space. Right. So that was, I've lived in both kinds of, you know, layouts. And for me, I just, I just like this better. Yeah. Well, I think one of the points they were saying was that people are getting a little tired of like, if one person's watching TV, it monopolizes oh. all the sound in a large space. Or if someone's doing dishes, well, now the person watching TV can't hear. Like, it's just that everyone's living and doing so many things and they're all, yeah, you know, competing with each other. Or you feel like mm-hmm. you can't get away to just a quiet little corner. Maybe that's why I like our concept so much. Yes. <laughs> well, that's space. such good news because I've wanted to knock out walls in my house and I constantly dream of it and try to figure it out and it really just won't work. Like every wall I want to knock out is a load bearing wall or something that yeah. just can't go. Right. So now I've waited long enough and it's all coming back around to where. There you go, Julie. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. That is perfect. I'm feeling better and better about my house. <laughs> All right. Well, here I do actually have a source for you, Emily. 
House Beautiful predicts over-the-top or ornate window treatments are coming back. What do you think about that? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I hope not. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I actually saw the article that you're talking about, and I think they predicted like the very ornate cornice boards are coming back. And I don't know, to me, that's, that's, I think if you've lived through that in the 80s, and it's it's too much, it's too much. I don't know. I love the look of a lot of natural light coming in. I've used just the simple bamboo shades throughout our house. And, you know, I love those layered with curtains, but to invest a lot of money again in in an over the top custom design window treatment, I just think it's something that most people are probably getting away from. Yeah. To me, that's the equivalent of 80 shoulder pads and puffy sleeves. Yes. (laughs) It's never coming back. (laughs) Not for me either. Well, and once you spend that much money on a particular, you know, design color pattern, your taste changes. I yes. mean, my taste so changes. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that this may be a case of some designer wanting them to come back, but I don't right. know if they're going to be back to the masses. All right. Well, here's something that I think a lot of us probably experimented with. I remember them recommending you do like combs and, you know, sponges and all these different things, textured paint finishes. Do you think they're coming back, Emily? Oh, this is another, I hope not. (laughs) I'm not a fan. I mean, I'm really not, especially after I've had to pay to get all these popcorn ceilings off. Oh, yes. I don't want any textures on my wall on purpose. Yes. I think it's like sort of the equivalent. All of these are kind of like if you said, do you want a home perm? Like we all had them, but we're not willing to go back. What a great analogy. You do it and you learn and you move on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, here's one. Wallpaper. For anyone who has spent hours painstakingly removing it, this prediction seems unlikely. And yet I am seeing it in a lot of places. This one is a yes for me, actually. Um, I've used it in our house. However, I would say a big no to traditional wallpaper. There is pill and stick options everywhere. There are tons of websites that are selling it now. You can get almost every pattern. It is a piece of cake to put on. I've done this in two different rooms of my house. It is literally, you peel the back off, you stick it on the wall, you get it wrong, you peel it back off, you put it back on. It's it's repositionable. As a matter of fact, when I've pulled it off before, I've kind of um, crumbled it up by accident. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've ruined this whole piece. No, it straightens completely back out, smooths out. You can smooth all the bubbles out with a credit card, just like regular wallpaper. Actually, you need like another pair of hands just to make it. Easy, but it's it's super easy. It's not the cheapest in the world, but neither is you know regular wallpaper. Sure, but I think for the headache that you get not only installing regular wallpaper but taking that stuff off, yeah. it is worth every penny. Yeah, oh, and I loved what you did in your daughter's bookcase, the behind yeah. shelves. That's kind of what I'm thinking about using it for. That was the easiest yeah. project. She did most of that herself, and it was just like a 30 minute project we knocked out. We did used one roll of wallpaper on each bookcase. So it wasn't, yeah. you know, terribly expensive. And I think that paper came from Home Depot. I think so. Really? Oh, so really like okay. big box stores are selling it. You don't oh, yeah. have to. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Target, right. uh, Home Depot, Wayfair. Um, I think one of the biggest selections online is Spoonflower. I don't know if you guys are familiar with I've that website. That but before. Yeah. You can do, um, matching patterns in fabric and wallpaper. So, okay. and, they're, and people upload their own designs. So there are so many options. Uh-huh. That's where I, I yeah. got the I do wallpaper think it's pretty, uh, Like on one wall, even, you know, mm-hmm. just doing one wall of wallpaper in a bedroom yeah. or bath. I recently went on some home tours here in Nashville and just about every like downstairs powder room was wallpapered. Like that seems mm-hmm. to be the room that maybe people are experimenting with first. Yeah. I mean, it's small. You know, you're not going to see it all the time. So you might as well just do something crazy. (laughs) Right. All right. Well, if we're not ready to wallpaper, Emily, and we want to paint, this is always such an interesting question. What colors do you see coming around for 2020? I think this year we're going to see a lot of bold color. You know, I really think that the farmhouse trend with the grays and the whites, it's been everywhere for so many years. I think that people are moving away from that a little bit, possibly. And, you know, Pantone that announces their big color of the year just named classic blue, the 2020 color of the year. So everything I think is going to be really um, colorful, bold. It doesn't necessarily mean entire rooms are going to be covered, but Mm -hmm. I do think you're going to see, you know, resurgence of color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now classic blue, is that like between Navy and what would it be between? I I think it's almost like a Royal blue. It's just a, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I love blue. I mean, I feel like blue in any form is usually always around and it is very classic. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, I love all of my blue and white pieces. So I think that <laughs> we'll say blue I was ahead white, of the trend. Mm-hmm. It's so classy. It, it just really is. is. And it goes with mm-hmm. so many things. It's it hard to, to mess it up. So many different colors go with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It re- really does. What about for somebody who's listening and they're thinking, oh, I just painted my whole house gray. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, if you love the gray, go with the gray. Again, uh-huh. this goes back to the whole do what you love, ignore the trends. But even with gray, you can bring in rich, uh-huh. you know, jewel tones with on your pillows or your curtains. I mean, there's a lot of things to do besides just painting a wall. Right. Or, you know, get in your garage and start painting a big piece of poster board <laughs> or, right. a big, or a big <laughs> canvas, you know. Right. Um, look for your accessories. Gray can still be a great neutral backdrop. But I think the whole thing of gray walls and white furniture and just Mm -hmm. very uh, subtle color, I think we're going to see less of that and more bold accent colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think people that are listening in the middle years are probably going to be slower to jump on that bandwagon because we've lived through like bold red dining rooms or, you know, so we may be thinking, Mm -hmm. oh, maybe I'll keep that neutral backdrop. And bring in the richer colors the way you suggested, pillows, fabrics, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's more feasible for, for most people unless you're wanting to just do something totally different. But I mean, I think uh, especially in January, you know, order a couple of really good big velvet pillows and a couple of different colors. Mm-hmm. Throw those on your couch for a little while and live with them and see if you even like that accent color in your room before you do mm-hmm. anything more permanent. Right, right. All right. Well, Emily, I've given you a lot of ideas that I read on the internet, but what do you predict for 2020? What are you excited about for this year? Well, something I have seen a lot lately, and I would love to do some of this in my house. I just don't know if I'll have the time or inclination to actually get it done. Um, I'm loving the trend of painted trim. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, monochromatic painted trim, the same color as the walls, where everything is the same color. They painted Mm -hmm. the windows, the door frames, doors, everything the same as the walls. And I love the way that feels, but even um, in our dining room, I painted it black, but I remember hesitating and I just left the trim white when I did it a couple of years ago. And now okay. I'm kind of like, dang, I wish I would have gone back and just painted it all. I love, I love the look. It's just committing. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think trim painting is one of those things that we're very reluctant to have to do twice. Yes, yes. Which is yeah. why I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and oil base paint is harder to mm-hmm. deal with. Yes. yes. Right. Is there anything else that you may try in your own home this year? Actually, you know, it's funny that you just talked about red dining rooms. I really am having the itch to go upstairs and paint our entire playroom red top to bottom, oh, like wow. ceilings, walls. <laughs> I, think. Um, I know it's a little crazy and it probably <laughs> will not happen yet, but um, it goes back to, I think I actually saw an Instagram post. It was probably from the Colonial Williamsburg account and a designer had used, um, can't think of the name of it, but it was one of their darker red colors. Mm. And like, I would love to use that somewhere. And, you know, maybe our upstairs playroom, which is not such a playroom anymore, but more like a den or hangout. Right. Just thinking that might be a good place to introduce a, you know, a deep, fun color. And I feel like that would feel very cozy up there with your, did you say you have a blue velvet sectional? And Yes. Especially if I get my light fixture hung back. Yes. <laughs> <And that's laughs> yeah. You're going to definitely need your light fixture. <laughs> Well, Emily, do you paint a lot of furniture? I used to, uh, and I used to enjoy it, but honestly, I've just kind of gotten out of that that habit, and I either want to find it done or just, I just don't paint it. <laughs> I just yeah. make it work. Yeah, right. I've kind of gotten lazy in that department, honestly. My garage used to always be full, and I just, I'm kind of over it at this point. It's part of that midlife. Do you think that you see more um, wood furniture coming back in? Maybe the people aren't going to just buy it and paint it right away? I really do. Yeah, I think that people are, you know, seeing again the beauty in natural wood and having the warmth of a wood piece in a room. At one point, everybody was going crazy with the spray paint and right. every every piece had to be painted some crazy color. And yeah, I think that's kind of run its course a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now you're not seeing that quite as often unless it's just if the piece is already in really bad shape, then why not just try it? But sure, you have, you know, a piece that's in really great shape and has really put mm-hmm. pretty wood grain, then it can be really nice in a room. Right, right. And it can be a lot less upkeep. You know, take one of those little wood pencils or something to fill in the gashes mm-hmm. than it right. is to, to repaint. <laughs> it is. Story of my life, Marie. 
<laughs> All right. Well, listeners, if you want to see what Emily does this year in her house, you need to definitely go and follow her on Instagram at Emily A. Clark. And also read her blog, emilyaclark.com. I know I'm going to be watching to see what you do. And if you do that red <laughs> playroom, I'm going to be super impressed. That's a lot of actually, pressure. Actually, I when she have said that. <laughs> well, when she said she painted her dining room black, I'm like, I didn't see that on Instagram. So I'm, I'm looking at it now. That looks yeah, really I good. Yeah. I would I have really never like in a million years. You have a lot of good natural light, like you said, but I love it. With your natural fiber rug, that looks yes. really good. <laughs> How long do you think you vacillated back and forth before you decided just to go for it on that? Not long. I don't take a lot of time in making these decisions. I feel mm-hmm. like I usually go with first instinct and right. I do not. This is probably not what you're supposed to do, but I don't go to the paint store and buy 10 swatches. I don't think about it. Usually it's first instinct. I just try it. I'm like, you know, if I mess this up too bad, then I can just redo it. You just have to fix it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm much less precise than people think that I really am. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but I feel like that's how I decorate though. And I appreciate you saying that because it's almost like when the mood strikes, I have to stop everything and just and work just on it, it then. Because yeah. that's at the point where I'm feeling creative and I'm willing to move things around mm-hmm. and try to move that furniture from, from downstairs to upstairs or whatever it is. Yeah. So you have been such a breath of fresh air to talk to. <laughs> and I am going to scour the rest of your Instagram now and get some more very practical ideas from you. Okay. All right. Sounds like we're all big fans of Emily Clark. And now it's time to move into our I'm a fan. All right, Emily, every week we have a part of the show where we share different products or shows or different things that we're a fan of. And you're our guest. So we're going to ask you to go first. What are you a fan of this week? So we just finished the holidays, so I thought this seemed appropriate. I'm going to recommend my favorite new jogger sweatpants from Amazon. Oh, perfect. (laughs) Yes. Okay, so these things, I ordered them for my daughter, and then when I saw them and felt of them, I ordered two pairs for me. So they are uh, Leggings Depot is the brand. They're $13. They are the softest. Um, I have them in black and then like the black and gray camo. And I'm telling you, the first, when I first got mine, I wore them four days in a row. My kids even said something about it. <laughs> that's so gross. I shouldn't even say that. No, that, that's a sign that they're really good. Okay. But there yeah. is nothing better than coming home putting on, and putting on your comfortable pants. So mm-hmm. that's right. True. Well, listeners, I will put a link to that in the show notes so that you can get your own comfortable pants. That is awesome. All right, Mindy, what do you have for us this week? All right. Well, I bought this product as a way to try to save my house and my nose. Um, I've got three active boys that I have mentioned are in different stages of puberty and all of their shoes smell so bad. They all play (laughs) sports and we just happen to have like our coat closet is right off of our kitchen. You can imagine I'm in the kitchen and I start to smell stuff and I'm like, this is not gonna, this is not going to work. You can't burn enough candles, can you, Mindy? No, no. And I <laughs> smell is a major thing, like the atmosphere. You know, I love a clean smell. So I was in the store to buy fabric and I'm in the checkout line and I look over and there's a little bottle and it's called Fit Pori and it's Shoe Pori for smelly shoes. <laughs> I'm getting this. Is it F-I-T Pori? Yes. Yes. And it's in just like a little bottle, $10. I'm like, it's worth the investment. If this is going to help, it said to spray the shoes and let them fully dry before the boys wear them again, or I'm sorry, any kids for me as boys. And that if it's for really bad smells to treat them multiple times, well, we had to treat multiple times, Uh (laughs) (laughs) but I just sprayed them. And then I put the shoes outside to kind of air out and it just completely helped diffuse the smell. All right. Well, we're all closed up for winter now. So Fit Pori seems something like we should all have. I'm going to buy these because usually I just take handfuls of shoes and check them out into my garage. So yes. And then every time my garage door opened, I would smell it again. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Julie, what are you a fan of this week? All right. I'm a fan of the show Endeavor, which is it's on Amazon. It's a crime show, detective show set in Oxford, which 
we mm-hmm. got to visit Oxford last year for a week. And so I think that's kind of why I love the show because it's set there. And mm-hmm. everywhere they go, I can say, oh, I've been there. I remember that street even. I don't know. I love all the characters. You really get into their lives and their history and care a lot about them. So I think I'm in the last season. And the, the very last season you have to pay for on Amazon. So I haven't done that yet. But my daughter said, Mom, it's worth it. You'll want to pay for it. Oh, wow. Okay. We'll have to try that one. I love British crime shows. All right. This week, I'm a fan of Trader Joe's winter wake-up tea. We all know that January mornings can feel dark and cold. The name of this tea called to me. It's a spicy black tea blend with cinnamon and ginger. Mm. So it really has a great smell. It doesn't say how much caffeine. I can't find the caffeine level on the box. But I'm assuming it's not decaffeinated since it's winter wake no. up. <laughs> so you're, Black tea. you're yeah. definitely going to want to drink it in the morning, but it really has a great smell. And we just did a Trader Joe's episode last month, episode 59. So if you want to go back and listen to a lot of great product ideas that we have, check that episode out. Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. We really enjoyed it. And we have so many great ideas to implement in the new year. Good. Thank you, guys. This is a lot of fun. I was nervous, but you made this easy. Thanks. Uh, (laughs) Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. I loved hearing all your ideas. Yes. Practical and usable. Good. And doable. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Listeners, if you want to get the show notes for today's episode, send me your email at midlifematterspodcast at gmail.com and I'll add you to the list. Every week you'll get an email where you can click to get our I'm a fan recommendations and also play the episode. Listeners, be sure and check out Emily's blog, emilyaclark.com and her Instagram account at emilyaclark. There's so many great ideas on there and I know you guys are going to be just as inspired as we are. Yes, your Instagram is beautiful. It is. It is. I just saw where she talked about how she fell in love with the color yellow. Even in Christmas decor, that is my well, favorite color. Yes. Yes. The account that I just tagged there, he's awesome. Uh, Josh Young is his name. You should follow him. Yes. He's amazing. Okay. Okay. So, yes. Definitely lots to use from her Instagram account. Yes. And listeners, if you implement anything in your home based on pictures that you see or anything that we talked about today, tag us. We would love to see them. I think it's so fun just to see what people do based on something that they've heard about on a podcast or read in a blog post. It doesn't have to be that you implemented it the exact same way, but if it inspired you to change something in your house, I would love to see a before and after. That is the most fun. Yeah, I would love to see that. All right. Thanks again, Emily, Mindy, and Julie. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you later. We're so happy you joined us today. If you'd like to get the show notes for today's episode, please email your name and address to midlifematterspodcast at gmail.com and write show notes in the subject line. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.